This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. I script every video I put out, and that doesn't mean that I use the script when I film or I'm worried about the individual words, but scripting, it does help me to prepare what I'm gonna say before I turn the cameras on, and that's how I like to make a film. And if that's you as well, I probably have some good tips to offer you. It's probably important to say before you get excited about the tips I'm gonna give you that you don't necessarily have to go this route. In fact, if you look at YouTube as a whole, it's true that vlogging style videos seem to do a lot better and people follow along a lot more, and it also means you can put out a lot more videos. So seriously think about what sort of videos you want to make. I had a few specific reasons about why I didn't want to go that kind of reactive vlogging style video. The first is that I don't think I'm very good at just turning the camera on and talking. Some people are brilliant at that. They really can and I've watched them do it. Just turn the camera on and talk to camera really freely and easily and just have sort of an idea where they want to go but no more thinking than that. I know if I do that though I just end up rambling and I really didn't want to give myself that headache in the edit trying to make sense of all the stuff that I said. So I wanted to be a little bit more prepared than that. The second reason is that I really enjoy writing. I find it therapeutic and to be honest if I didn't have this channel and need to write scripts for this channel I'd still be writing every day and I just see this as a way to put that writing to good use somehow. And the third reason is that I really enjoy speaking and I don't just mean talking or rambling on but where you take a bit of time to craft what you want to say and deliver a message to a group of people and they take it on board and it means something to them. I've got a huge appreciation for language used well. So let me give you some tips on how I write for my videos. Let's talk about the where, first of all. I really like writing in coffee shops. I don't like writing at home for some reason. I think it's because there are just too many distractions. There's a television, there's computer games, there's stuff to do, and, and even emails can be a distraction as well. So I like to go somewhere, sit down, turn off the internet, sit, and just type away. And I do this coffee shop sometimes, although ordering a coffee every single time can get quite expensive. So sometimes I will just pitch up at a meeting an hour early or half hour early and use that early time to sit and type away. Or sometimes I'll even just sit and write on the bus. I don't know why that's true for me, but it has been for ages. I wrote a book about 10 years ago and I wrote the whole thing from one coffee shop overlooking the beach in Cape Town. And for some reason, being in that space, having ordered a coffee, which I now felt I paid money, so I had to use this time well or it's a waste of money, and that there were other people around me having conversations, there was a beautiful view out the window. Those sound like distractions, but for some reason, the fact that I was there, it kind of charged my creativity more than when I was sitting alone at home. So I'd say find a space where you can sit that charges you creatively and that might be different for you. Practically speaking, I write on my iPad Pro. It's the uh, previous generation 10.5 inch and it's got this little uh, connected uh, keyboard. The nice thing is because of the connector, there's no lag when you're typing, which is really good. I use an app called IA Writer. I'm not sponsored by them. They don't even know I'm doing this, but I know if I don't answer the question now, I'll answer it a million times in the comments. So that's the name of the app. And the reason I like it is because it's very, very simple and stripped out. So you're working with plain text and it has this nice little feature where it just highlights the sentence that you're working on. So you're not worried about the overall structure, you're really working on just the little piece of the script that you're working on. And it stores it all like an export as PDFs. And if you use a subscription model, it looks like you can sync between different devices, but I haven't gone that route. I just export PDFs and use it like that. So let's talk about how I write these scripts. A lot of you will know that in my 20s I was a priest or pastor or whatever you want to call it and that meant that every week I was preparing messages to give to a group of people and some of you have joked that this channel is just me finding a way to keep preaching and you're probably not wrong. There's definitely an element of that because I will always have this part of me that really gets a kick out of speaking to another group of people and having them feel inspired and leaving wanting to change their lives for the better in some way. I'll even admit that this channel isn't just about photography for me. I talk to you a lot about it. I want you to get better at what you do. I am passionate about photography myself, but I'm also using photography as sort of a Trojan horse to talk about things which I think is even more important, like forming a life philosophy for yourself that helps you get out of 
your own head and out of your own way and back to leading a more fulfilling and meaningful life. My time spent working for church was really good for me in that it taught me how to communicate well because there were a good four years of my life where I was studying full time and working out how do I structure communication when I put it together and I still use the same loose structure today. It's become the skeleton that I hang the points of what I want to say on and even though each video is very different from the next, that structure is always in place somewhere holding everything together and it comes in three acts. Let's call the first act the question. I think it's really important in the first few minutes of your video to be clear about the question that you want to tackle with the video that you're about to ask people to watch. Because I know for me, I won't stick around in a video where I'm not sure they know what this video is about. Don't think about your own videos for a second. Think about the videos you watch. No matter how vibey the music is or swooshy the B-roll is, it can only hold you for so long before you realize they're being a little bit cagey about what this video is about. So somewhere up front, I like to state my intent. This is what this video is, and it should probably be the title of your video as well. The reason I say question is because YouTube is actually now the second biggest search engine online. Now think about that for a second. That means Google is number one, YouTube is number two, and then Yahoo and Bing and other search engines come underneath, which means people are using a video platform like they use search engines. Like I had an experience recently where I had my car and the indicator light had gone out, and instead of taking to the mechanic, I decided to quickly Google, could I work this out for myself? And I found a video that showed me what bulb I needed to buy and I could prop my phone up on the bonnet of the car and actually fix my own light bulb. And I'm not technically minded at all just by following this guy who showed me in 90 seconds because he was clear about the question he was answering with the video. Because people are on YouTube looking for answers to specific questions, if you can be clear in your title and clear in your script what question you're attempting to answer, it stands much more of a chance of people finding you where you are. Remember though that the question in your title, the question that you say you're answering in your introduction, you have made a promise now that you need to fulfill and answer that question. Clickbait will only get you so far. You might get a lot of draw to one video by putting up clickbaity titles, but you will lose the trust of your audience over time. And me personally, everything I say in my title, in my intro, in terms of what I'm setting up, needs to be something I fulfill through the rest of the video or I don't deserve the followers I have. Here's an example of me setting up the question in a video I wanted to make about how to overcome your creative block. I hear a lot of creatives say, I didn't make anything today because I just didn't feel it. But I wonder if we have to feel it before we create something. I recently read Stephen Pressfield's book, The War of Art, and in the book he talks about resistance, which he says is anything which keeps us from creating. He speaks about it like an internal voice which never sleeps, but always whispers that that creative act can wait for another day. A day which we know, if we're honest with ourselves, might never come. It's like an internal monologue which runs, constantly giving us excuses not to risk, not to get up, not to get out, not to pick up the camera or take out the paintbrushes or open up that Word document. In short, it's the voice which tells us not to create today. We all have our own list of resistances which we battle, but I thought I'd share mine with you and how I deal with them, in the hope that it will help you think about your own and help you find ways to beat them. Let's call the second act of the video the meat of the video. In the meat, you wanna make sure that you're answering the question that you've set up. So this is where you're giving the content that you feel you have to give. And I always suggest to loosely structure it around three points if you can. You can stretch it to two, you can stretch it to four or five, but to be honest, there's something magical for us human beings about three. And I, I understand what a cliche it is that every pastor's sermon has three points, but it's not just that. Think about the world of comedy. Comedy has the, the rule of three where you set up one normal thing, one normal thing, and hit your punchline on the third. It's not supposed to be inhabited, and when they're not doing that, frying themselves outside, they all fling themselves into the sea, which is inhabited almost exclusively by things designed to kill you. Sharks, jellyfish, swimming knives, they're all in there. They <laughs> There's something about that number that has a rhythm to us as human beings, but it's also a small enough number of points for us to go away and remember those points on our own. But remember, even if you only have three points in your video, you're still only saying one thing. You're answering the question you set up at the beginning. 
I think the mistake a lot of people make is they try and make their videos too complicated. They try and dump all their information that they have on a particular subject on people all at once. And then they don't spend any time on each because they're trying to go through a long bullet list of, of you know, seven to 10 different things they know about something. And that just shoots you in the foot. It means that you're giving everyone everything you know upfront. You can't make videos on this subject again. Plus you're not giving enough information within each of those points for people to actually take that meat away and to work on it. So I would always say work on saying less and saying it well. And I promise you it will help you in the long run because you'll have more videos to make over time and people will feel like the content they've got out of you is a lot richer and more helpful. Let's call the third act the benediction. Now I know benediction is a very churchy word and has a lot of connotations to it, but I still like the idea. And the idea itself is actually a very old idea. And all spiritual traditions around the world do this. If a teacher stands up to teach something and they get to the end of that message, they then give some form of benediction where they wish the people that have just listened to what they've said, success and luck and more fulfilled and helpful and healthy lives going forward on that topic. They'll say something like, may you, may you go out there and hug more puppies, whatever it happens to be, may you, my wish for you is that you go out there, take something I've given you and that it makes your life better somehow. And I do exactly the same thing because I think it's a great way to recap the stuff I've just said. Plus, I genuinely like wishing you well. It feels good for me to do. So all round, it feels like a great way to wrap things up. Here's an example of me wrapping up a video I did last year on a trip to Cumbria. So if you're thinking of taking that leap, my best advice to you would be to calibrate your expectations so you don't just throw in the towel when the universe doesn't gift you with instant success. It will be hard work. You will feel like you're falling behind your peers and it will be tough because you don't feel like you're getting the response for the effort that you're putting in. Just remember that if progress feels slow, it only means you're normal. It's slow for most of us. Learn to learn from rejection. Um, make mistakes, just make different mistakes every time and experiment because it's the only way you're going to learn. You will start in winter because all change does really. But springtime will come. You just have to ride it out until the seasons change. So hopefully by the end of a video, I have set up a question with you that I'm promising I'm going to answer. I'm giving you the meat of what I want to say, which is hopefully the answer to that question. And then I'm repeating again in that benediction at the end, the stuff that I've said and wishing you well in how you can apply it to your own lives. And that's the structure of every video. And I'm often working to hide that structure and not make it too predictable and change things around. But loosely speaking, that's the journey I want to take you on every time. Now let's talk about what you're going to say. This is the tough one. I get asked a lot on YouTube, Sean, I want to start a YouTube channel. What do you think I should make a YouTube channel on? The simple answer to that is there is no way I can tell you. I just can't tell you what you should be saying. And I know how intimidating the blank page is, but that is your journey to go on, to work out what you have to give from yourself that other people need to know, what you have to share with the rest of us. What I will say is if you're not being deliberate about putting things in, it's naive to think that you're going to have useful things coming out. I mean, I'm very, very deliberate about reading a lot, about listening to podcasts, about thinking about things I want to talk about, about talking to friends about it, so that I'm constantly mulling over those ideas and thinking about them in a way that hopefully when the time comes, I will have useful things to say about those things. I like the idea of ruminating. I mean, the word ruminate has that double meaning. One meaning being that, you know, when we sit and we put things in our brain and we think about them, but the other, the direct meaning of the word is, is for animals that chew grass, like goats and cows, they ruminate and they have this process where they eat grass and then they swallow it down. And then they vomit it back up some point during the day. Sorry, it's a bit gross. And then they chew it some more to get all the nutrients out of it they possibly can and swallow it down. And later they'll vomit it back up into their mouth, chew it some more and swallow it down. That's what ruminating is. It's bringing things back up internally to suck all the goodness out of it that we possibly can. So I take that really seriously, thinking about things, reading things, listening to things, having conversations so that I'm thinking, I'm putting things into my brain and I'm bringing them back up during the day to process them and churn them over. And then when I have an idea, I'll write it down. I use um, a notebook, which I carry with me every day, just to jot down ideas. And I've also got a Google Doc going as well, just for ideas on videos I might wanna do. And I know when I've ruminated on them enough and they're ready to go and I can sit down and hammer out a script, but I don't rush it. I wait for that moment when I feel like I've got enough to say 
that it's worth your time. Now let me talk quickly about how I actually use the script once it's finished. I, I print the PDF out and I have that with me when I film, but I don't use the words on the page. I think script gives this idea that I'm trying to memorize every word or I'm using a teleprompter to try and say the exact thing that I wanted to write down. The exact words aren't important to me at that point at all. It's the fact that I've done the preparation and I can then go ahead and film confident that I've at least thought this thing through. If I just tried to say a memorized script to you word for word, you'd feel it and it wouldn't feel authentic. So I'm always trying to ride that balance between being prepared, but also just saying it in the moment. And this is how I do it. So this is the script that I took with me to Iceland. If you haven't seen that video, it's called Time. And what I do is I take those sections that I used and I cut them up physically uh, into pieces of paper, sort of uh, this size. And these then go into my camera backpack. And next to it, sometimes I'll just write like a little idea about what sort of place I'd like to film this. And then when I'm driving around, I'll see a spot and think that's gonna work well to film in. I'll pull out the piece of paper of the bit that I wanna say to camera and I will read it through once. And then it goes back in my bag and I don't touch it again. And then I'll say that piece to camera two, three, maybe four times and pick the best version. And the point when I'm saying it is not to say exactly the words on the page. I just then trust that I'm gonna remember the flow of it and that's important. And I also want you to see me thinking about what I'm gonna say next. I don't want it to feel too prepared. I wanna be prepared, but I wanna still be thinking of the wording as I'm going along. And that's how I ride that line between being prepared and also thinking about what I'm saying and trying to make it authentic in the moment. You have to find the way that works for you because you don't wanna be on the one side so over prepared you're trying to remember wording because it's gonna feel like a speech, it's gonna smack of the politician and people aren't gonna believe you and they won't believe you care about what you're actually saying. And on the other side, you could be so unprepared that you just waffle and don't really say anything. For me, good communication is in that sweet spot in the middle. See, it's time for that benediction and I hope that with what I've told you, whether it's in your work day-to-day, uh, -day, you do speaking of some kind in meetings, or maybe you want to get into public speaking, or maybe specifically, like I said in this video, you want to work out how to speak on your YouTube videos and craft what you want to say. I hope this video has given you something to think about in terms of preparing what you want to communicate. I'll warn you that there's a difference between the method and the style. I've given you my method for preparing these things, and you're welcome to use it, obviously, and adapt it and use it in your own way. But but don't try copy my style. I think we can all tell when we're watching a channel and some YouTuber is trying to rip another YouTuber's style and I think it comes across as disingenuous. And the whole thing about YouTube is we're all on there because we're hungry for authenticity. So the way you're gonna do that is to work out how you speak, saying things the way that you would say them so people actually get the feeling that you care about what you're saying. And if you're stuck with the blank page, read more, listen more, create more mental space for you to think things through because I promise you the more you put in and the more space you give yourself, the more that creative flow will become unblocked and you'll start to write more freely. I think if you're gonna script your videos on a platform like YouTube, success is gonna come down to balancing out how prepared you are versus how in the moment you can be and saying things with your voice. Because it's gonna take you having the courage to authentically and inspirationally and originally tell us the things you're learning from your life so that we can go away and change our lives for the better. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you need a new website or a domain, especially if you're a creative, check them out. They're a brilliant option. I've run my whole business this year off my website and this being sort of the first year of freelancing properly and it couldn't have been easier. I have had my gallery up there, about pages. I have uh, made sure that some videos are posted in there as well. I put up a store this year and payments from the store have, have flowed smoothly. I can check the analytics on stuff like that. Everything was there and couldn't have been simpler and when things did go wrong or become confusing, they had staff there to help me 24 seven, which was really, really useful. So if you're looking to start a business, photography or video, and you want a website, definitely check them out. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and go to squarespace.com forward slash Sean Tucker to get 10% off your first purchase.